Does extracorporeal shockwave therapy actually work for treating pain? Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. As a sports medicine doctor with years of experience helping athletes and individuals recover from injuries and manage chronic pain, I'm excited to explore the science behind shockwave therapy with you. In this video, we'll break down what shockwave therapy is, how it works, and review the latest clinical trial evidence to assess its effectiveness. I'll also compare it to other common treatments like physical therapy, cortisone injections, and platelet-rich plasma injections. By the end, you'll have a clearer understanding of whether shockwave therapy might be a good treatment option for you. Okay, so let's first start with the basics. What is extracorporeal shockwave therapy? This is a non-invasive treatment that uses high energy sound waves to stimulate healing and repair in tendons, ligaments, muscles, and bones. These sound waves activate your body's natural healing processes through several key mechanisms. First, shockwave therapy promotes the formation of new blood vessels, boosting circulation in the treated area. Better blood flow means more oxygen and more nutrients can reach the tissue speeding up the recovery process. It also activates key cells responsible for tissue repair. Fibroblasts, which help rebuild tendons and muscles, and osteoblasts, which are essential for bone healing. Another way shockwave therapy works is by breaking down scar tissue, fibrosis, and calcifications, which helps restore normal movement and improve mobility. It also stimulates the release of natural growth factors, which promote tissue regeneration and reduce inflammation, further enhancing the healing process. Lastly, shockwave therapy helps relieve pain by desensitizing nerve endings and disrupting pain signals. Thanks to these healing effects, shockwave therapy is widely used to treat a range of orthopedic conditions, including plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendinopathy, rotator cuff injuries, calcific tendonitis, and osteoarthritis. But while it all sounds promising, what does the research actually say? How effective is shockwave therapy and how does it stack up against other treatment options? Let's first look at how it works for tendinopathies. A systematic review and meta-analysis of 45 clinical trials examined the impact of shockwave therapy on chronic Achilles tendinopathy, plantar fasciitis, lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow, and rotator cuff tendinopathy. The strongest results were seen in rotator cuff tendinopathy with significant pain reduction. Achilles tendinopathy also showed marked improvements in both pain and function. While plantar fasciitis demonstrated substantial pain relief, it was slightly less effective compared to the other two. For tennis elbow, the benefits were moderate but still meaningful. The study concluded that extracorporeal shockwave therapy can be a highly effective option for relieving pain in people with tendinopathy. Now let's shift our attention to joint issues such as osteoarthritis. A recent study on severe knee osteoarthritis compared physical therapy alone to physical therapy combined with shockwave therapy. The results were impressive. The group receiving shockwave therapy showed an 82% improvement in functional ability compared to just 48% in the physical therapy alone group. Similarly, shockwave therapy has shown promising results for frozen shoulders, a condition marked by joint pain and restricted movement. A systematic review and meta-analysis assessed various non-surgical treatments and found that shockwave therapy ranked among the top options for reducing pain and improving shoulder function, performing as well as established treatments like ultrasound-guided capsular distension. Beyond joint and tendon conditions, shockwave therapy has also proven to be highly beneficial for managing muscular pain, particularly myofascial pain syndrome. A recent review of 27 clinical trials found that shockwave therapy significantly reduced pain, improved function, and increased pain tolerance in patients with myofascial pain syndrome compared to other treatments. Additionally, other studies have demonstrated that focused shockwave therapy has been shown to be more effective than other approaches in reducing pain and increasing pain threshold, especially for pain in the neck and shoulder areas. So I think the evidence clearly shows that shockwave therapy is highly effective in treating many orthopedic conditions, often leading to better outcomes compared to physical therapy. 
but how does it stack up against other treatments like corticosteroid injections or platelet-rich plasma injections? This newly published meta-analysis compared shockwave therapy to corticosteroid injections for treating plantar fasciitis, including over 1,100 participants across 16 studies. The results showed that shockwave therapy was more effective than corticosteroids at both three and six months, significantly reducing pain, decreasing plantar fascia thickness, and improving foot function. In contrast, the effects of corticosteroids were short-lived, often fading after 12 weeks. And what about how shockwave therapy compares to platelet-rich plasma injections? A meta-analysis comparing PRP injections to shockwave therapy for plantar fasciitis found that PRP provided a slightly greater reduction in pain and plantar fascia thickness at 3 to 6 months. However, the differences were not substantial, indicating that shockwave therapy is also highly effective in improving symptoms. One major advantage of shockwave therapy over PRP is that it is non-invasive, requires little to no downtime, and avoids the complications associated with injections. This makes shockwave therapy an appealing option for those seeking effective pain relief and functional improvement without the invasiveness or recovery time of PRP. Now that we've covered the effectiveness of shockwave therapy, let's talk about what you can expect during and after the treatment sessions. Shockwave therapy is conducted in a clinic setting where a healthcare provider will first assess the area to be treated. A gel is applied to the skin and a handheld device is used to deliver shockwaves in a circular motion over the targeted area. The intensity starts low and is gradually increased to a level that's comfortable for you. While higher energy levels can lead to quicker improvements and better outcomes, some mild to moderate discomfort during the session is normal. After treatment, you can immediately return to your regular activities. You might experience mild soreness, swelling, or redness in the treated area, but these typically subside within 48 hours. If needed, you can take acetaminophen for pain relief. However, it's important to avoid NSAIDs like ibuprofen, naproxen, or aspirin as they can interfere with the healing process. Typically, shockwave therapy involves three to five sessions scheduled once or twice a week, depending on your condition and how you respond. Many patients notice improvements after just one or two sessions with the best results often appearing a few weeks after completing the full course. Combining shockwave therapy with other treatments like exercise programs or platelet rich plasma injections can further enhance results. Shockwave therapy is generally safe with minimal side effects. However, it is not recommended for individuals with blood clotting disorders, during pregnancy, or in the presence of tumors or cancers. It's important to note that most insurance plans do not cover extracorporeal shockwave therapy and many clinics consider it a self-pay procedure. The cost per session typically ranges from $150 to $300, so a full course can cost between $450 and $1,500 depending on the condition being treated and the number of sessions required. Another important consideration is the long-term success and recurrence rates of pain after completing shockwave therapy. Unfortunately, there are limited studies specifically examining these outcomes. While shockwave therapy is often promoted for its tissue regeneration capabilities, its long-term effects may not be as strong as those seen with platelet-rich plasma injections, which have demonstrated excellent long-term results. Results. For example, a study on PRP injections for high-grade rotator cuff tears found that nearly 80% of patients treated with platelet-rich plasma experienced complete healing of the tear at 6 months, compared to only 21% in the placebo group. With PRP, we are directly injecting platelets and growth factors into the injured area, precisely activating the healing process at the source. In contrast, shockwave therapy works indirectly by stimulating healing through external acoustic waves, which may not have the same level of impact. Additionally, when considering costs, shockwave therapy can sometimes be more expensive than PRP injections, so it's important to weigh the benefits of each treatment option carefully. To further complicate things, there are two types of shockwave therapy devices, focused and radial. The choice between the two depends on the condition being treated, the depth of the targeted tissue, and the specific therapeutic goals. 
Focus shockwaves are precise and penetrate deeper into tissues, making them ideal for targeting specific problem areas. In contrast, radial shockwaves treat more superficial tissues with broader, less concentrated coverage. For optimal results, a combination of both is often used. Focus shockwaves to directly address the affected area and radial shockwaves to treat the surrounding soft tissue. For those looking for the best results, combining PRP injections with shockwaves therapy could provide the most comprehensive approach. These treatments can be done concurrently, enhancing the healing process while minimizing downtime. Ultimately, the versatility and proven effectiveness of shockwave therapy make it a valuable tool in managing chronic pain and promoting recovery from injury. Whether used alone or in conjunction with other treatments, it offers a pathway to better healing and improved quality of life. If you're considering shockwave therapy, consult with your healthcare provider to determine the best treatment plan for your needs. Thanks for watching.